All right, buckle up, because we're diving into the mind-bending world of infinity. Infinity isn't just another big number, it's a mind-blowing concept. The concept of infinity affects us and the universe in so many ways, from its part in the creation of breathtaking fractals, to the immense impact of the never-ending digits of pi, which shape our architecture and construction, to the creation of majestic yet unfathomably destructive black holes, which spread throughout our cosmos. Infinity is the idea that no matter how far up the number line we go, we can still go further. In fact, any number we think of is effectively zero when compared to the idea of infinity. Today, I will take you on a journey through the different types of infinity that humanity has discovered and the applications of infinity in our universe. First up, we have the infinity created by the set of all natural numbers, such as 1, 2, 3, and so on. This infinity is known as the smallest infinity. We can use the idea of this type of infinity to describe the number of iterations that would be required to create an infinitely detailed fractal. For example, to create the intricate details of the famous Mandelbrot fractal, we initially substitute Zn as 0 into the equation Zn plus c, where c is a constant complex number. We then take the result of this equation and plug it back into the equation as Zn. By repeating this process numerous times and examining the behavior of the resulting sequence, we generate a fractal. As our repetitions approach infinity, the level and quantity of detail in the fractal also approaches infinity. Another application of this type of infinity is the analysis of probabilistic events. Have you ever tried flipping coins? If so, you may have realized that in small sample sizes, it is unlikely that the observed probability of flipping heads will match the true probability of flipping heads. However, as the number of flips approaches infinity, the observed probability approaches the true probability of 50%. Another application can be seen in infinite series like the harmonic series. The harmonic series is an infinite sum of the reciprocals of natural numbers, as seen here. We can represent each fraction as a volume of a sphere to get a visual understanding of what this means. This series is known as a divergent series, as it will continually increase without any upper bound. Now, here's a challenge. Which infinity is larger? Is it the infinity of natural numbers that we just discussed, or the infinity that describes the number of terms in the set of all even numbers? That's easy, right? It has got to be the natural numbers. Well, that is actually wrong. Both sets actually contain the same number of terms. In order to show that this is true, we can use something called a bisection. In order to understand what a bisection is, let's imagine a room full of yellow and blue balloons. If we wanted to figure out if there were the same amount of yellow and blue balloons, how could we do this? Your first impulse may be to count them, and that would work. Another way we could do it, however, is to pair up the blue and yellow balloons. If every balloon has a pair, then there must be an equal number of blue and yellow balloons. We can't count to infinity, so when we are trying to compare two sets of numbers, we must use this pairing method. In this case, we compare 0 in the natural number set with 0 in the even number set. Yes, 0 is even by the way. We can also pair 1 in the natural number set with 2 in the even number set, and 2 with 4, and 3 with 6, and so on. Since every number in the natural number set has a pair with a number in the even number set, we can conclude that both sets have an equal number of terms. Next up, we have the infinity created by the set of all real numbers. Real numbers are all the numbers along a continuous number line. This is known as the largest infinity. This infinity plays a pivotal role in describing the singularity within black holes, where the gravitational forces become infinitely strong and space-time curvature approaches infinite density. It is also used in Einstein's special relativity to describe the relativistic mass of an object as it approaches the speed of light. When we try to use our pairing method between the set of all natural numbers and the set of all real numbers, we see that it does not work. This is because the natural number set is a countable set, while the real number set is an uncountable set, or as I like to call it, an unlistable set. To understand what this means, Let's look at the set of natural numbers again. Even though counting through all the natural numbers would take forever, 
You can get to any particular element in a finite amount of time. For example, you can get to 5 by counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the set of all real numbers, however, we cannot do this. For example, let's try counting to 5 in the set of all real numbers. We start with 0, and then from there, there are an infinite number of terms between 0 and 5. So we cannot count to 5 in a finite amount of time. We can prove this is true by using the Cantor proof. To begin this proof, we take any amount of numbers within the real number set or real number interval. We then take the digit in the first decimal place of the first number, the digit in the second decimal place of the second number, the digit in the third decimal place of the third number, and so on. And then we combine these digits to create a new number. We then take this number and transform it by changing every 2 into a 1 and changing every other digit into a 2. We can be certain that this number does not equal any of the other numbers in our original list. This is because the digit in the first decimal place is different from the digit in the first decimal place of our first number in our list, and the digit in the second decimal place is different from the digit in the second decimal place of our second number in our original list, and so on. This means that any continuous set of real numbers between two points on the number line has an infinite number of terms. So the number of terms between 0 and 1 is the same number of terms as there is between 0 and Graham's number, which is the same number of terms between 0 and tree 3. Wow, infinity is amazing. Before I go, I want to show you one more interesting characteristic of infinity. Imagine you are playing darts. Consider the tip of your dart to have an infinitely small diameter, and consider the dartboard to be made up of an infinite amount of infinitely small points. What is the probability of your dart hitting one of these infinitely small points on the dartboard? If the probability is greater than zero, then the probability of hitting any point on the board will be the probability of hitting one point times infinity, which is infinity. If the probability is equal to zero, then the probability of hitting any point on the board will be zero. So what's the answer?